All right, good evening, guys. Canada Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for February 23rd, 2023. Uh, we'll start with the um, swing portfolio, uh, Alcoa. Uh, th these were the two uh, PSAR flips I had considered but did not take. Uh, it opened up with a gap down and sold off and um, took the short standard risk box on the 30-minute bars. And the intraday, the RL10 found support right down there by the 10-day low and then spent the next two hours recovering. So I took the exit intraday uh, right at the edge of the dragon uh, for a plus two on a fast swing. Uh, it continued on through the rest of the day, um, but we're in sideways, and I just didn't have the willpower to uh, to take that one as a as a long. So I just was happy to cash two in sideways conditions and uh, leave it at that. Cliff, uh, our last trade on this uh, was this Kata two which paid, we traded that one intraday. It's been locked in a really nice tight range today. It didn't really do anything except fail to fail further. So this is a candidate for an intraday trade tomorrow. Um, I don't know if I'm interested in swing trading that one uh, unless we make so much money intraday that it just, I'm forced to do it. So flat going in tomorrow, probably intraday only. Uh, yesterday, we took the one day uh, this was a stop and reverse on a micro fail. We took the intraday uh, plus one. Uh, this one, there was a trade in here today, but uh, this is not one of my reliable traders for the three minutes, so I just noticed it. Uh, I noticed that it was trying to do a PSR flip, but it closed poorly, so that was not a good candidate for a swing tomorrow. Uh, but I will be prepared to go short on this one because it will have broken below that uh, five-day low. And uh, longer term, uh, there's still, this is a rejection of, uh, of that big gap and a harsh move up. And then we've been playing that on the short side all the way down. So if this fails here tomorrow, I'm looking for a one-day trade that gets it back into this region. So that looks like the opportunity trade for tomorrow. On the other hand, if it can get above, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say 8750. Uh, I think that's not an unreasonable trade effort right there. Uh, the only thing that's stopping me is a sideways market condition right now, but um, this could actually have some legs. And if it if it gets above 8750, uh, I think I'll take that because this is the Remember, this is the tail end of a Godzilla that has given one run up and grudging move down. So if it can hold here, that's a cot of two all day, and I'll be ready to play that long. But for right now, flat. Uh, Devon Energy. So this is a uh, this is an SSC that we're playing from here. Uh, we've suffered through some sideways uh, pain, and today it, it gapped up and, and then closed well. So that feels pretty good. Finally, you know, got some traction out of this thing. And now uh, there's room to the upside uh, on this one. Remember, there was a large, painful 14% sell-off in here. So it has, it feels like it found support at 54, and this is that first day out of the hole so the next target would be the five day high uh, then the the sell-off level halfway up the stack and then back to fair value so there's a long slog ahead on this thing and if um, energy retains its strength then Devon energy should be a good play as an intraday and as a swing and I like the fact that we're well started with the SSC had to wait a few days but uh, we got a little traction today, so that feels pretty good. Uh, maintaining that one overnight. Electronic Arts. 
uh, we took the uh, we took the failure signal here today at the collapsing dragon. Notice this was that descending triangle, and I just decided to cash a one day uh, plus two R on a in one day intraday swing on a thirty minute chart. Um, this one has some potential for a lot more short side because uh, after that big 15% sell off here, you know, it's been trying to make a base right here. And today was really the first day of new lows. So we're not allowed to be surprised if that fails some more tomorrow and uh, taking it down. Um, if we, let's, let's just take a minute and appreciate what that, what that Godzilla really means. Um, let's look at, uh, let's take a look at a three day chart. So this is just, so we're going from 30 minutes to three days. And this is why uh, that's really important. That whole channel of downward action just broke for more. And then if you come back over here, the previous support level, it broke that. And now the next target is down around in here, below 100. So there's a significant move to the downside. Um, that's if this channel keeps failing. However, if it can hold here at the 150, remember, this is the 150-day box right here. If it can hold here, then the target would be back to the midpoint of this channel which would be about 120, and then the far side of that channel. So this thing is in a perfect critical state, ready to go hard in either direction, and uh, EA is now in really in play. That's what a uh, Godzilla looks like, and if it collapses, look out below. Uh, if we go to the to the daily chart, now you can see how that is, uh, that's just ready to fail. Today was a, a new 10-day, 30-day, and 150-day low. So if that, if that breaks below, you know, 110.50, pile on to the downside. Today was not a helpful day for Electronic Arts. That's a pretty special case. Uh, emerging markets. Uh, yesterday, we, uh, you know, there was the gap down, and so that was a minus one. We stopped and reversed and got paid on a two-day trade here to the PSR flip just in time so that we didn't eat this gap up. That's the reason I take them when I got them. Now, there was a tradable moment inside here all the way back down to support. And then a tradable moment in here. So this was a real trader today. I didn't get any of that on a swing. Uh, I'm I'm tempted by this breakout here to put a box on that tomorrow and see if it can break above, call that 39.25. Then I'd be interested in an intraday trade. And then if it gets above, call that 39.55, then turn it into a swing trade here with an entry as of here. So I would use that, the money made on this intraday trade to fund a swing trade pattern. So that'll be a priority for tomorrow. Um, Mexico, uh, just stalking. Uh, I was tempted by the PSAR flip, but was mindful of the sideways market. And so even though this is a Kata 2, uh, I elected not to increase my overnight risk in a sideways market. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. Uh, Brazil. This was another reason I like in uh, I like taking the trade and cashing them when I have them. It closed fairly well, but if we'd have been you know, if we'd have stayed short, hadn't taken that one, we'd have been happy and then gotten smashed. That would have turned a 2R win on this risk with an entry here. Instead of plus 2, we'd have been minus 1. 
Now, the, again, there was a tradable move as it recovered all the way back to support and then another, a second tradable move. Uh, so on the three minutes, Brazil was really a nice trader today. It's uh, one of those frog champions that trades well intraday and as a swing. Uh, Intel, yesterday uh, we took Intel as a intraday trade, and it was so powerful and it was so weak, it has been so weak, that we kept it as a swing trade with our stop here. And then sure as shooting, gaps up, runs up, and then fails all the way back down. Holds support at the same level. And so just thankful that I was on 30-minute charts and that I'd kept the the wide stop for a couple days and see how it goes. I was happy to cash 2R instead of getting shaken out. So the on the 30-minute, you in my view, you got to give it a couple days to really establish the direction of the trade. Um, uh, otherwise, your intraday stuff is going to get you prematurely out. So plus two on, um, on Intel. And uh, to be honest, this was actually, to me, evidence of people buying it on such a fire sale that there was initial burst of buying orders, and then the sell-off says there was no other follow-through from market participants who just noticed that with interest to say, oh, maybe there is some buying interest in Intel. And so maybe people picked up a little accumulation. I would not be surprised to see a one-day nice move off of this double-bottom support. So that's going to be a high-priority play for me intraday. International paper. Uh, I watched the Cauda 2 developed uh, from here and here. There was a PSR flip. That's a legitimate entry. Uh, if it follows through tomorrow and takes out the daily high, I'll get long here intraday and then try to hold it as a swing. And remember, this is a big gap down here, so you're not going to get any resistance until about 38.25. So this was this was the hint of some promising action. Um, the reason I didn't get it and hold it overnight is because it did that here and never got above this price level. That was the high of the day today, too. So really, 36.75, put an alert on that one, and if it breaks above that, just buy it. Do your own due diligence. Your mileage may vary. Uh, IYR covered today. Here was our short on the PSAR flip. Uh, this was one, two, so this is day one, day two, day three. It had a nice orderly move down. It didn't PSAR flip with the RL10 until here, so I took that one with one unit of risk, two units of reward. That's a plus two R on a three-day trade and no overnight risk. And then this is starting to look promising um, if there's a rebound tomorrow, so I'll be ready for that one. Uh, McDonald's. Uh, this was just dead money on that long, one, two, three, and nothing, and started to fail. So I took the micro loss and, and then did not get the move. There was a tradable move here down and then one up. Uh, I was not on it. I had other things. But um, this is starting to look like uh, support levels here. So I could see how you could be persuaded to get long here with a stop, call it to the bottom of the dragon. That's about a $2.50 risk. Is there $5 of move to the upside, two seventy three? I think so. But it has to get through this price level. So that would be your speculation. If you think it's going up and it can get above two above two sixty seven fifty. Um, you're betting, hoping that it can uh, it can get to this test at 270 and keep going. But if it does get here and starts to fail, you should cash that and just make bank on that move. That so this is a intraday trade until it gets above 270. Um, marijuana. Um, our last trade was this short. Missed the re-entry short. It's coming into the station for an SSC tomorrow. 
This support level, though, is below that. So this would be an SSC. Those fail more often than Kata 2s. You'd like to have seen this one come down further so it would have a higher low, but you didn't. So that makes this an SSC. And resistance is right here. Um, not really interested in it yet. Let me see it make one more recovery and go, and then maybe I'd be interested. But for right now, interesting, but not persuaded. Clean energy. Uh, yesterday we cashed the two days short from here. It had a nice gap up, pulled back, found support at a higher low. This was a Kata 2. Um, if it can break above 43.50 tomorrow, I think I'd be interested right there as an intraday. Then if it breaks above 44.50, this is where I'll initiate the swing. So a swing here and a day here. And then we'll use this money on the day trade to fund the swing trade. Uh, treasuries, this is the one that we bought on spec uh, yesterday, or a day before yesterday at the close, because this was a, if you will recall, to the 10-day high was like 5.8 to 1 reward to risk ratio, and it was finding support right above the key level of 100, and it had a nice little wiggle yesterday, and today it was just more of the same. That feels pretty good, and we're holding 2R and TLT. If you go back and listen to this, you will hear how much I don't like that trade, and I'm not optimistic about it, and it was a pure uh, percentage play, pot odds, that kind of stuff. Um, you couldn't have been more disinterested in it than me, and there's 2R on the long side, so what are you going to do? Uh, Tesla, uh, I like the Kata 2 on this one, so this is what I was willing to hold overnight. I saw this. This looks like a, a reverse head and shoulders or whatever, whatever a technician might call, but I was persuaded by the winter and then the spring and now summer with a PSAR flip and a Kata 2. So I'm long from there, just a, just north of the critical 200, and I'm using this risk box uh, of about uh, call that about five bucks. And I, the first target would be here, the previous peak of the RL10. So 208, and then the peak up in here, second level at 216. Uh, so this is, that's an $8 potential gain and another 8 uh, against 5. That's about a 3 to 1. So we'll see. I don't mind that one. Another percentage play. Uh, U.S. Steel, we took the gift or the scratch. Watched it find support where it held support before. Uh, there's a piece our flip. Wasn't ready to hold that overnight. This is still just a really tight channel. And uh, this little recovery failed. This one couldn't hold. This one failed right away. So until this gets through with power, um, not interested in the swing. I'll play it on a three-minute chart for sure all day. It's U.S. Steel. But as a swing trade, it has to get, I think, above 29 to leave all this behind. And then... This is all gap, and then the target would be up in here at about 30.1. All right, that's the uh, portfolio review. Appreciate your attention on that one. All right, this one is our intraday, three minutes, Alcoa. Here's where it closed yesterday. Here's where it, uh, let's see, gapped. Here's the opening three minute bar. Here's the mechanical entry to the short side. Um, check or hold. And there's our standard wrist box. It runs all the way down to here, starts to reverse. 
So I take the exit at the edge of the edge of the dragon in the usual way. When uh, it crosses the dragon and hits the PSAR, I take that with uh, an SSC. It fails Im almost immediately, almost immediately. And um, I couldn't get out of it with a scratch. Ended up taking a half an hour loss here. So this is, that's about plus one. The first one here is about minus 0.5. And then it, uh, and then it continues to fail, so that's where I stopped and reversed, and basically using that as a risk box. Check or hold. So now we're short. Second position on the collapsing dragon. That R10 wiggle. There's the bottom of that RL10. There's your little R10 wiggle second position there was your first position um, this little recovery I wouldn't be offended if you took the exit right here because that second position is still in the money and you've had a nice move and the winter is has turned to spring in the RL 10 and you've got two positions on this thing so that's not a bad exit right there would not be offended uh, it didn't breach the dragon, gave a little uh, one more leg down, and then took it as it as the PSAR was hit. So in this case, it just trusted trusted the PSAR. So there's first entry, second entry, one unit of risk. So one, two, plus two on the first position. You know, on this one probably 0.5. So this 0.5 cancels that 0.5, and then 1 plus 2. We're at about plus 3 right now. Try another short. Uh, that's a cot of 2. That gets about plus 1. Exiting at the edge of the dragon as the PSAR approaches. Then the SSC. Scratch. Short. Scratch. Long. Missed the second entry. I'm just taking it at the PSAR. Caught a two re-entry. Cash one. And good for the day. So this was pretty much a, um, you know, a bi-directional day with that double bottom. This turned out to be a nice grinding, probably 5R. And you can see the non-directional bias inside here but otherwise big day down sideways chop lunchtime good recovery the net for the day was not much you know in terms of pure price you know open to close but there was 6r just in the intraday volatility and then flat for overnight nothing wrong with that See what we got from the boys. Uh, Agnieszka, our intern. How's she doing here? She's on the uh, euro dollar on the fives. Uh, caught or uh, uh, SSC. It rolls up and then over and gets a second position, then a quick exit. Um, that exit there should be the stop and reverse. She waited for this. That was a micro loss. Uh, there was a Kata 2 entry here, which would have paid. Um, but she ends at 1.3. Still a good day at work. Uh, here's Nolan um, on, um, let's see, let's raise, raise that up a little bit. All right, uh, 
4.7 for the day. Nice. He's using the OR30 instead of the 3, uh, trading with reduced size. He's using candles to better see price action rather than bars. Um, I, they they distract me just a bit, but that's personal preference. Um, he got his biggest win early. The last trade was in the, into the start of an SSC. So uh, he gets the he sees the gap up. Uh, it can't really get any higher in this chop, and then it breaks through the dragon. He gets the PSR flip just right. Nails this on this recovery, 2.1. He waits for it to roll. Oh, oh I'm sorry. This was, uh, yeah, okay. Rolls over, plays it short here. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Uh, I would normally have gotten that about here. That's pretty amazing. But it was rejecting the, um, the VWAP, so that's a pretty good shot. There's the confirmation when it comes through the Dragon through the PSR and now he's well into this thing it starts to recover and then when that collapses and then starts to recover he takes that big bar as a gift and brings 2.5 uh, this one rolls over and I think he was being oh no no that must be long right there and then exit for minus one so and then SSC crushes it for 1.1 and that's how you bring home 4.7. That's pretty good shooting. Uh, let's see. Is this Kuhn? Yeah, this is Kuhn. And he's trading Devin on the three minutes. OR3. Oh, I'm sorry, Gary. Sorry. Uh, good patience in here, and then when it breaks through the dragon and the dragon rolls over and the PSR flip, and this is going short, uh, I think you can get out right here, uh, but that's still disciplined. Uh, tries the kata too long, minus one, that will just happen. He plays the kata two. We can, second position, I would be a little more aggressive on this one because there's a one, two, three which you could exit here and then that second position would have been in in the money or as you note at the skin of the dragon and then you had the presence of mind to crush this that's a good shot uh, I probably would have stopped and reversed you never know and that that could pay off but total 1.7 that's a big improvement well done this is uh, Satya on uh, three minutes on Devon. Now he noticed that the OR3 didn't really fail and then when it crosses the VWAP going long he gets that. That's a modification. Nice. Standard risk gets paid. Tries this short. Cuts it quick. Uh, sees that everything is below the VWAP and failing. Waits for confirmation crushes that. This would have been tempting as a second position to me on that wiggle and fail. Great exit and there was your oh that's a cot of two off of that big move there. Wow. And wow. But still 1.4. Uh, you're at two, you're at 389 trades. I would like to see a histogram um, of your last 50 in your last 100 trades uh, and then you know all of them if you have them but we want to start looking at the stats on your performance we have a uh, we have a good trading sample right now to work with uh, this is uh, Luke with the Aussie He was looking at the dollar Japan, otherwise he would have crushed this one. He gets the emerging dragon. That's a little slow. We might have taken the Kata 2 in here or the PSR flip there. Both of those would get paid, but that's a micro loss. You did get this one. Now, this is given back way too much. 
uh, Edge of the Dragon. Then this becomes the Kata 2 re-entry, and then that's a great exit. And uh, netting 1.1 for the day. Um, here's Kyun. Let's see. Uh, this is uh, is this Devon? Stand by. Oh, U.S. Steel. Okay. Now here's the gap up in the OR3. Might have played this one short here. Uh, otherwise, when this recovers and then fails again, now you got a lower high. It's through the dragon. There's your PSAR flip entry instead of here and now notice when this thing doesn't work right away if you'd been in here instead of here that's just a scratch and then you'd play this long from here and then that would have scratched and then when that fails again you've got a kata 2 to the downside with a PSAR flip entry here and then that pays you and then this would be your second entry which scratches so there's a couple moves in here that um, uh, we could be on. And then then this little thing right here, that's a collapsing dragon and a kata 2. You need to crush that. Here's your SSC here instead of here, and that pays well. Then here's your reversal instead of here. So you're about one leg short on these. Uh, he notices the... There's the SSC, or the Kata, I should say Kata 2. Um, this one is an emerging dragon. So again, the fat part of the curve we're not getting. Concur? Um, I would just say, take replay that one a couple times and start looking for those turning points a little earlier. Trade it with half the size. If you're trading it for practice with two shares live, drop it to one share to see if you can pull that trigger a little quicker. Uh, Kin on uh, Devon Energy. Uh, at He's at 1.1 here today. He's looking to get some skills in Devon Energy. That's a good candidate. Um, this, this combined collapsing dragon right here uh, here's another, that's the second position, Collapsing Dragon. Uh, micro gain, micro loss, SSC crushed it. Um, that's a good short. This could be a stop and reverse here or here or here. And then all of that gets paid. Okay, so you did get that one. I'm sorry. My bad. Well done. Nice. Nice. Let's see what we got in here, Ken. All right, so Peter uh, just posted his first trades. Many thanks for the inspiration. Uh, he's going through the foundations and drinking like a fire hose. Everybody in here knows exactly what you mean. So keep up the good, keep up the fire. All right, let's. Uh, did I do that? Wrong? So Peter Dees, uh, now he's a couple hundred trades into the practice. He started Foundations a couple weeks ago. This is his first bar-by-bar -bar replay, and a total on the S&P today is 10 and a quarter. So there's the OR3. Um, there's the 1R fail. There's a collapsing dragon and a second position and crushes it. Then the SSC gains, re-entry, second position, Big win for 
in SPY. And that's what the futures trade looks like. You could make a living on that. Uh, this is international paper, the OR3. Uh, let's tr try to get the, uh, instead of thumbnails, maybe if, you, if you're if you using um, Snagit, a little higher resolution on that so we can see it a little easier. Uh, gets paid nicely. There's the PSAR flip. Has the courage to, uh, to stay with it for about half an hour. Nails the collapsing dragon. And then here's the SSC and a second position. Whew, another 10R. Smoking it. That's nothing wrong with that. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the daily report. Oh. Dashboard one. Sideways quiet. Risk off on the risk index. So this is a cautionary tale. That's why you saw me not take as many overnight positions. Um, we're in sideways, not bolt. Now, sideways quiet is favorable, but it's a razor thin margin. Uh, got a couple overreactions and channelings that are firing on the big indexes so there's still some residual strength on this uh, mcdonald's is trying to make a move proctor and coke intel and disney still weak along with microsoft weakness so the tech still has some uh, room to recover here uh, on the dow and large caps tons of auto framers uh, 1.5DD in Cisco. Uh, I like Microsoft was a winner today, and it's yet it's still 3 to 1. And you can see that there was some strength in uh, ExxonMobil and therefore energy. And that's the strength in Devon could be coming from as well. So I still think there's some juice in energy, if I can say it that way. Lots of good auto framers to choose from. Uh, XLE is 3.2, and it was in a doji today, so I like that. Uh, the triple screen swing trade firing in technology, the Qs, European 350, and EFA. So that's market condition. Market leaders are getting ready to roar tomorrow, I think. So I'm going to be ready for that long side move led by tech and the globals. There's your auto framer with lots of uh, well-positioned symbols with all the uh, mechanical entry frames that you would need for end-of-day trading and the reward-to-risk ratio in the usual way. Handful of daily squeezes, including McDonald's, ExxonMobil. We'll go right to the uh, Godzillas and the Snipers. Uh, DPZ is a volatile Godzilla. The other ones are kind of all sleepy. And Electronic Arts is, I'm still waiting for that to do something. If that, that still has some room to collapse. Nothing in the tactical symbol set from Godzilla. Um, standard work in the auto framers. Um, it was kind of an inside day today. There was a few breakdowns. A little bit of strength yet in Merck. ExxonMobil. Treasuries. I like that treasury swing trade. I just got to be honest. And then the energy, that's where the energy is in, in Devon Energy is coming from. So let's just continue to be opportunistic coyotes.
and uh, that's everything we want to cover for today. This this actually looks like uh, you know from a distance that S and P with some Kata two action holding support at the edge of the river that could go. All right, take good care. We'll get this published and posted, and see you tomorrow.